the idea and the concept of breaking barriers and building bridges between Africans, immigrant, and Africans, American. The reality is we are all black. However, our journeys are totally different. We Africans, immigrant, where we live from Africa, we are majority. We don't know how it feels to be a minority. We might have been colonized, but we've never been oppressed. However, for our brothers, African brothers and sisters, Africans, American, they live in an environment where they've been minority for centuries, where they've been oppressed, where they did not have access to education. While we might all be black and look alike, but we are very different. So there's a lot of stereotype in our community. There's a lot of assumption in our community. One way that the Africans, Americans, they struggle to understand the way we think, the way we do things. And on the other hand, the African immigrant, we struggle to understand some of the things that the Africans, Americans do. So we want to break those barriers because we need that. We know for a fact we all need to come together as one. This is the idea of breaking barriers and building bridges. Now, again, whatever you do in life, if you want it to be successful, make sure that it comes from the people to go back to the people. So this is not something that a group of people decide to identify the barriers on their own and decide to find the solution on their own. Instead, we brought community leaders, both from the black community and the African immigrant community, to discuss. There are some very interesting conversations that's happening at the table if you get to hear them. So, symbiotically, it, it comes out in your behavior. So now when you see black people in a professional setting and it's a lot of whites, you shy off. You look down. You don't speak. And then you're, you're trying to make Caucasians comfortable, even at the expense of your brother and sister, which doesn't make sense to me. I think that once we become comfortable, and I don't know how you do that, but we just need to just start speaking to each other, feeling comfortable, and I think that's one way that we can get past some of the issues that we have. Or Africa, doing videos and engaging our African community through hip hop, all other through dance. You're seeing more, and you look at Beyonce had an African dance troupe in one of her videos. I mean, um, dressing in African attire and, ex and, and beginning to identify with the African component of their identity. Entertainment can be a powerful tool of, of better representation for us. Better and bridging the gap, and bridging the gap between America and, and Africa. Like in rare earth minerals, like in healthcare, like in transporting our education, our educators who are unable to find gainful employment here, they can actually go and, and, and teach on the continent. So it's an, it's an equal exchange. So if we don't have to just do things on the ground here, we can also do work on the continent as well. I'm looking at what we're talking about, college students and people in higher education and things like that. What about those who are not educated um, among in our communities? Um, the African-American community, the, the uh, immigrant community, the you know, who are not educated and how are we going to connect with them in terms of uh, making sure that they understand what is going on between these two groups of people. So I think starting with the young people because as we get older we are set in our ways and we don't want to change and don't want to believe but the children will lead us and as we start moving with them then we can start having pods with our older and, and, and it can be happening simultaneously, but we can start working with the other communities. But we got to start with those who are more open-minded to, to do this change. So if you take somebody, whether it's an African-American, an African, come work with me. You don't have to get paid, but you are learning. That creates friendship. Long I got four or five people that have gone to Africa because of friendship. I believe that the more we mentor, if there's an African American here that know how to do construction, business storytelling, I want to come there. What, what are we saying? The white supremacy system, the system that grabs us when we come here. What, what are we saying about the system? We're saying that we need to come together socially and politically. That's what we're saying. That's the big picture. That's the big picture. 
This is, this is very important because what happened, you need, to, you need to solve that problem. How do you solve this problem? I'm an African, no, not only me. As doctor mentioned it, most of Ethiopians, for example, they're Republican. What makes it to be the Republican? America governed by one government, but two parties. Why? As a constitution that's very strong, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, as I said, we have the same problem in Africa. She talked about education. Yeah. That's a fact. You have ignorance. But we need to accept as a people the way they are and respect them because the Constitution of the United States allows them to behave that way. You're black. You walk into a room, you're not, you're not from Kenya, you're black, yes. right? Yes. And then once you, once you identify yourself, you're still black. Now you're an immigrant on yes. top of that, mm -hmm. and it probably means that you're not as smart, right? Because you didn't come, you didn't grow up in America. I mean, there's all of these implications when you are not African American. So you, I mean, it's like hurdles, a lots of hurdles. So you know, we got we got to be on the move. We got to be productive. You know, and produce proactive. Yeah. yeah. You need to, that's why they are saying here, there are barriers. And you have to break those barriers so that as many people as possible see the need for the change. And therefore they come along. Those of us who are already bought, who have already bought into this, we don't need to be educated, we not, don't need to be convinced about it. But there are many others who do not know. And we, have to we have to educate them and bring them on board and convince them to try to join us. I think that, that that's, that's important. I, I want to see some productivity, some evidence of something, you know, material evidence of institutions that's going to uh, help us and create in terms of creating intergenerational wealth that's going to be passed on and on and on, you know. So, yeah. We, we want to educate them, but we're not waiting on them. So, so I understand how we try to train and teach people, but the way that, we, especially our white brothers and sisters in the Methodist church and in certain areas, they're not interested. And they're, and it, and they're changing the wording or exegeting how the Bible really says exactly. what it says. So exactly. I've, I've given up on that. It's, it's our humanity is what's going to take us to make a difference. Yeah some different point of view, but the setting allow people to accept each other's point of view. And the hope is at the end of the conversation, we'll come up with a solution, not only that will change of our life, but the change of the life of the future generation. My name is Dana Magnutwani. Uh, my name is Maldoshi, or Mordecai, whichever. And I was picked by my, my table. They kicked me in the pool. And so here I am to present. Now, she's awesome. Because she's awesome, we picked her. Thank you. So, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Dana Mangutwani, and I am here representing the Colorado Black Arts Festival along with the director there. And uh, Papa asked uh, us to come to share, and this has been a blessing. The conversation at my table was so rich, so I'm going to kind of read the top ones, but we had three papers, challenge. Anybody had three pa pieces of paper? <laughs> but, but, okay, it's not a competition, I was told. But I'm just gonna present just a few, few of our ideas, and I, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about it, because I wanna make sure there's enough time for every group. But um, I think what I say, everyone can kind of fill in the blanks about what they, what they think about those concepts. So the first one is, and this is the help of Papa, which is acknowledge barriers exist. That's why we're here. Um, there, a willingness to learn from each other, being competent in your mind. In other words, loving yourself and being competent in who you are and that kind of leads to my next one, which is don't sell out. Know who you are, okay? Um, being will, uh, having willingness to listen and hear. Leave your, leave your comfort zone. Thank you, Tanisha. Leave your comfort zone. Be uncomfortable. 
We can't be in isolated groups in our own silos. We are here as a group and let's leave our silos. So feel free to be uncomfortable. Trust. I'll say it again, trust. Be honest with yourself and others. Collective work and support of each other. Don't leave your brothers and sisters behind. Rebuild together. See each other as each of us as black people. Get rid of our stick to us attitude. It's not we against them, it's us with us. And that is all. Um, I'm, my name is Bianca Emerson. I'm the Vice President of Colorado Black Women for Political Action. And this is my partner. Mickey Alamaro. Yes, and our table was a 50-50 split. So we had um, five people from Africa and five people who are African Americans. So, give it up. So some of the things we thought was important was for um, Africans to learn African American history and understand um, what the transatlantic slave trade was really about and how egregious it was for African Americans. And our, our partner brought that up because he felt that it would give a better insight and understanding to the lives that African Americans live in our history. Um, and then starting businesses in Africa as African Americans, I put in parentheses, you know how Auntie Maxine said, reclaiming our time, we need to reclaim our land because it belongs to us too. Um, and then a learning to embrace we're all black, period. We're all from Africa, we're all one. And that brings out, that, that um, spe speaks to the idea of changing the vision between us as a people. Um, stop exploiting each other and you know, just kind of stereotyping each other. We're bad at that both, on both sides. Um, and then mentoring, um, one, of our part, one of our partners at, at the table says he knows so much about business and business internationally that he can share that with the next person, regardless um, if they're American or African American, and that will bring better opportunities overall as a whole for our people. And then refuse to stereotype each other. I don't know if I put this in, in, in this one, but refuse to stereotype each other and then don't allow white people to continue the, the perpetuation of stereotyping each other. Um, appreciate each other's strengths and then intentionally congregate, congregate with each other and not just go to a few things. I was going to go to the Nigerian Day thing today. I didn't get to go. But just go to more things intentionally and appreciate each other. And I always go to Papa's events. So... <laughs> Um, start businesses together and um, be intentional in recycling the black dollar. Yes. 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 Clap it up for that. And then unity, standing for all Africa and not, I said that this is, uh, this is it, allowing whites to promote the vision. And uh, Mick had a real, Mickey had a really good uh, point about that. You want to share? Oh, sure. So the reason we point out this is, as African American, we, we come up with a Rwanda. When they're fighting each other, the white people trying to, you know, divide them. So we said, as African fighting each other, as an African American here, stand together so they can solve the problem together instead of siding one to the other so they can fight each other. So we don't want to fight them, you know, until they die or something. So we're trying to put that one. And then continue to talk about how we know why Africans have come to America. Oh, so, so on that one also, we mentioned, you remember the movie called Coming to America? So on the Coming to America, a lot of people don't know about Eddie Murphy, that he was a prince, but he was working at a McDonald's or something, so people think he's, he's nothing. So as African-American, when people moved here, not only they come for it because they don't have money or they're not educated or they don't have a place to go, but some people move to, to be better educated, to have more business, from, they have an African business there, so they want to move their business to here. So when you, they see Africans, look at them, who they are, why they came from, and what, what is it their status in the back. So there's a lot of taxi driver, PhD holders, business holders, and more educated than a lot of people here. So if we strengthen each other, if we know each other, we can help each other to move along, be better. So that's, that's what we put in. So learn what would what, what make us better in our, our strengths. 
Our last two points is um, learning languages from the continent and then also support our people politically. I, I, all I know is Hafa, because I, <laughs> I did my... Accepting the African American in us and also accepting the African um, um, yes, exactly. And, and then the other thing we talked about was, um, like, we take pride as Americans in doing our DNA test. So I just, I did my DNA test, and uh, Dr. Carol did. She's from Senegal, and I'm from Nigeria and Central Africa, uh, Congolese and Cameroonian. So y'all yep. are my cousins for real. <laughs> my name is Miriam Dia. Uh, I'm a 10th grader in high school. This is my school. Uh, yeah, and I have Mr. T.H. Mack with me up here too. So our, so our group discussed um, being comfortable and confident to speak and acknowledge each other in public and making the effort to as well. Sometimes we shy away from each other, look down instead of looking each other in the eye and acknowledging each other. And our second point was being educated of each other's history. Um, so traveling to the African continent, sister cities, things of that sort, making sure we know each other's history. And uh, number three was teaching African and African American history in schools past slavery and past the civil rights era. Um, and also create, creating international schools focused on African history and teaching true history, not the white man's history, not his story, but teaching the truth. And we talked about think tanks for African and African Americans, so putting people of successful people together to think about solutions like we are all doing here today. Um, and then DNA testing, to know your origins as African Americans. And once you know that, getting involved with the African associations that are already built here in the States. We have Senegalese associations, Ghanaian associations, Nigerian associations. Once you know your origin, get involved with those associations so you can feel closer to your origins as well. Um, and then number six, we have children playing with each other and getting to know each other's backgrounds, going to each other's houses, eating each other's foods. Uh, number seven, we have empowering African Americans to just be around white folks. Um, no cult switching, no acting like this or that just because they're around, be yourself. Um, and then we have mental health accessibility. Um, and as well as mental health professionals that look like us and talk like us. Um, sometimes you feel more comfortable expressing yourself to someone who looks like you and understands you and who you can relate to. Um, and then we have physical health as well, having black and African doctors. And last, we have black and uh, African economic advisors, teachers, professors, educational advisors. Um, we sometimes, um, when it comes to economic advisors, we feel not everybody knows the pride in being economically access successful as a black or an African person who comes from maybe nothing. So having someone who can advise you properly about those things. Um, having teachers who you can relate to, professors who you can relate to, um, educational advisors who can tell you the right colleges to apply to, who aren't just doing it for their job or whatever. So yeah, that's our group. Uh, my name is Amlaku Bikishetik. Um, I work for the Fax Partnership uh, as a community outreach uh, assistant, and I do uh, translations from um, English into Amharic as a freelance uh, business, side of business. Um, I, everywhere I go, and I, I like to be a secretary, uh, and I was picked because I was writing <laughs> to present. Um, <clears throat> and it's a privilege to, to be able to present this. The topic is really a vast and engaging, interesting topic. Um, and we had really heated and um, um, very, act, uh, very good participation among the group members, though some of them already have left. Um, so the first thing that we put as a general umbrella for the rest of our solutions, proposed solutions, uh, is courageous conversations having con courageous conversation everywhere, like this one. This is just a courageous uh, attempt of conversation. Um, and involving youth, uh, students at colleges, high schools, uh, in, um, in, in this topic, including the diversity of our community. Uh, we said 
even among ourselves, the, Af the African immigrants like um, Nigerians, America, I mean, uh, Ethiopians, uh, Sierra Leone, uh, you name it, we, we, don't, we don't mix, we don't, uh, we are just um, within our own communities. We, so let's start mixing and in, being engaging um, and, and knowing one another. Um, and to implement the courageous conversation, we need uh, media that, is, uh, that takes the, the black uh, rhetoric and the black, um, the topic that we're discussing right now as a, as a subject of presentation. So we need a black, um, black media to enhance the, this courageous conversation. And educate, educating our community because there is language barrier and there is a cultural barrier, lot, um, different barriers. So to eliminate those bar barriers and to uh, have them be part of the conversation, let's go uh, out of our circle and reach those people who are, um, um, who are excluded because of language or because of uh, culture, cultural uh, problem, um, understanding. Uh, and the other is understanding th that we are, uh, this is a very interesting topic to me. Uh, globally, we are the, the majority. The black society is the majority. If you just take the whole Africa, the population of Africa, Latin America, and the, the African American in the United States, uh, we are the majority. So let's understand that, and let's feel proud. Let's feel, um, well, if we have the inferiority, let's avoid that. Um, inclusion of marginalized groups is just the same as um, in including um, educating our community. And we just don't have only one page. We have more here. <laughs> uh, educating the youngsters the genuine history of Africa and African American. Uh, and breaking out of the system that keeps us separate and play the, the, the blame game. Just um, in, let's break out of that system that keeps us complaining and complaining. Um, sharing opportunities in here in the United States and back in Africa. Um, visit and know Africa. Well, um, if there are brothers and sisters who have never been back to Africa. Please go and see the real uh, situation, the real environment, and the, the real people. Uh, that helps to understand one another. And even with, within Africans, I mean, let's, um, the, the West Africans travel to the East, and the East Africans travel to the West, and North to South, South to North. Uh, educating why is, why is it important for African American children to learn about African and African American history. It's not only wearing the t-shirt or uh, dancing the dance or just singing the music, but why is it really important? That's the, sec uh, the other uh, point we raised and which we believe that is important. And the last point is harnessing the social media to engage the youth. Nowadays, um, let alone the youth, we the grown apps uh, and the um, Adults don't read uh, actual print uh, hard copy books. We're always, that is really a problem. We're always on social media, LinkedIn, so, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. And we read books like uh, audio books um, and ebooks, and we are now not going back, I mean, to the libraries or buying books to just read the print uh, copy. So uh, harnessing the social media is really uh, one important uh, point that uh, we need to do and to use. And that was it. If there is anything that I missed, uh, my group members can add. And thank you so much. Have a good evening. Ungawa. <laughs> Black power. Fela. We're going to do this together because this is powerful. And I looked at your table on purpose because you're a political person. Let's see if you had this on yours. We gotta but we're gonna move forward. We gotta introduce ourselves. Huh? We gotta introduce the whole Oh, they gotta introduce themselves. Uh, right here. <laughs> My name's Selena Zixaka. Vera Gaeza. 
are celebrating because we have come together socio, political, and with policies, public policies. The reason why this is important because Africans in America are more so Republicans, and African Americans are more so Democrats. And John's going to explain to us why that is important. Um, yeah, more so because sometimes um, um, we don't we don't actually understand uh, the Africa when it comes to political issues. Um, and many a times they take all Africans or black people to be more, um, uh, more Democrats. So I did explain to a lot of Af um, um, African Americans that there has to be a way to push, pull all Africans to be either Democrats as people think, and they can be go anywhere. And that leads a lot of education. Why? Because a lot of Africans, when it comes to American politics, they are very involved in um, um, religious and tradition. And there are a lot of things that Af uh, America allows that Africans don't look into, even though they look at a way that, w they will vote in a way that will favor them, but social politically, they link towards um, Republican. Yeah. So social media and technology, everybody knows. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have every, every platform there is. However, a lot of people don't really know. People connect through social media. A lot of people learn through social media. It's not the truth, but that's how they learn. So bridging the gap of the truth and knowing between the, the different countries and where we are to connecting um, that's what I said as far as this group. Also, I said, I'm going to just go ahead and finish what I said. Visitation is very important because we're not just in Africa. We're everywhere. We're in Brazil. We're in South America. We're in North America. We're Central America. Everywhere there was a shoreline, that's where we landed. Um, also, I said food because guess what? Everybody eats. So I said food, and I said, I think... Mental, mental and emotional health, because a lot of us don't, I, a lot of people said the same thing, but we don't talk about our feelings. We don't talk about what's killing, basically killing us. Um, we also, mental health and wellness. We, a lot of men don't go to the doctor until something's wrong. We need to, we need to cut that out. We need to take, not only take care of our brothers, but we need to take care of our fathers our sons, our elders, um, and also women need to do the same because I know strong women, we don't like to do that neither. So, um, and he's gonna finish the rest. My name is Max Saar, I'm from Senegal. And uh, that topic, sport and solidarity, the reason why we have it here, as I said, we, are, we grew up playing soccer. That's what we know in Senegal, soccer, right? And here in America, it's called uh, football. No, it's called no, soccer. It's soccer here. We call it football. Y'all call it football. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. But anyway, to, to make it short, what I was telling them is when I first got here, I didn't know about football American. So when people come to my house, like some African-American friend, I'll be watching soccer. Tell him they look at it and they really cannot connect with that because they don't know it. So finally, I start switching, letting them watch, you know, football America. Nowadays, I cannot watch soccer anymore. Me myself, I'm so hooked to watching because it's too. Now it's too slow. Soccer is too slow for me. So by accepting to show them to to watch that with them, you know. We end up, I end up being hooked to watch football, so. Well, my name is Ndain Dao, and I'm originally from Senegal. And I just want to thank you all for being here today to come together to work on breaking out those barriers, building, and looking for a future to, together, for us, by us. So thank you for being here. Hi, I'm Emika, and nice to see everyone. Thank you. 
So we have a lot of ideas, and you can just put it up. I just summarized it. So some of the thoughts and ideas and solutions we shared uh, within our group are freedom of movement, movement for goods and people. We shouldn't have to pay a lot of money to be able to travel from Africa to America or from America to Africa or from China to Africa. Wherever we are, we should be able to freely travel without rest restrictions. Um, we share about relationship building. We should know about each other. We shouldn't be labeling each other derogatory term. We should be using uplifting words and uplifting terms to address each other. Get to know each other. Let's sit down, ask each other questions. I know someone already mentioned it, but there's something that's really important because you start with sitting down, getting to know each other, learning from you, you're learning from me, then creating that interest to take us, to take our relationship to the next level. Learning about our history. Um, our history has been written by others, not by us, and that needs to change because if we don't know who we are, where we are from, our language, our culture, the things that we do for ourselves, no one else is going to do it for us. If anything, they're going to erase that memory and instill something new that is not natural and that doesn't fit who we are. Entre entrepreneurship, so being able to trade and build economies here and abroad and supporting each other's businesses. Uh, we all have businesses, personal businesses, and as groups or specific individuals, and supporting each other is really important. Self-sufficiency. Um, we should be able to grow our own food. We should be able to have our own homes. We shouldn't be relying on others to build those things for us. S schools uh, for STEM, sciences, we should be teaching our kids, our, our women, our boys, our girls about STEM sciences, which is really important, and building our, having our own NASA or our own whatever to be able to get in the star in the universe, having our own uh, military to be able to protect ourselves, right? <laughs> okay. Um, eliminate racism, and maybe I should have started with that, but it was one of those ones that wherever we are, whether we are in Africa, wherever we are in America, in Europe, in Asia, people who look like us are faced with racism. The darker you are, the more you are marginalized, the more you have to suffer. Housing, uh, making sure we have housing for the homeless, make sure we feed the hungry. Let's work on supporting our brothers and sisters who are out there not having a safe home or food to eat on the table, or have to work multiple jobs to support each other. Amen. Establishing some, some strong foundation for upcoming generation. Eventually, we are gonna leave. But before we leave, let's make sure the kids that we're leaving behind, the next generation, have something to build off of so we can continue to advance and prosper. Owning our own shipping, air, shipping companies, airline, logistics, we move, goods move, people move, goods move. We should be owners of those things. I'm sorry? <laughs> yes, um, loving each other, regardless of who we are, the color, of, the shade of our skin, the religion we belong to, the ethnic group we belong to, uh, the tribe we belong to. We should, those are barriers we should be breaking it down. Not saying... We shouldn't be proud of being a Wolof or proud of being Igbo or another tribe. Be proud of it, that's fine. But let's not use that as something to divide each other. <laughs> Thank you. Ret <laughs> Returning to the motherland, um, let's open our countries for people around the world. The, being Pan-African, so all this, the umbrella thing is just Pan-Africanism. If we follow pan africa we have models, we have templates. People before us have came up with templates. Let's utilize those templates. Let's see what worked for us now and in the future. Maybe some of the things were outdated, but we have blueprints that we can build off of and be better for us while we are here and also for the next generation. Um, no more toxic masculinity. Let's empower our women, our girls. <laughs> no more. Toxic masculinity, that has to go. We have to empower our women. Women are the mothers. We create societies. We create 
kingdoms, empires, nations. Let's empower our women and we'll see what will happen. We got this. So let's do it. Real quick, uh, we all agree that um, we see beyond uh, standard definitions of identity. Uh, for, for matters of this exercise, we were three African Americans and four uh, African immigrants at the table. Uh, we had a great group and a rich conversation. Uh, we, we, we enjoyed this exercise of envisioning this wonderful future where we are uh, moving uh, with unity and collective uh, goals. So we identified the what's of what we want and then it was an exercise in reverse engineering how can we possibly get there? How can we get from where we are today to where we want to be in the future? So we talked about economic development, we talked about entertainment, we talked about education, and we talked about the simple act of, of, of socializing and doing that in a more strategic and impactful way. So when we talked about economic development, we talked about everything from small businesses and supporting each other. We talked about uh, better workforce and diversity representation. And then we got to the how. Well, how do we do that? We need better information networks where we're cross-promoting each other's businesses. We need better financial leverage like, um, like black-owned investment firms, like perhaps a revolving loan fund where we support a business through a loan fund and we work hard to make sure they're successful. If they're successful, they pay that money back. When they pay that money back, on to the next business, and we invest in them. So we try to be real practical about the, the how we get to the what. In the entertainment industry, like, think about it. It's, in, it's an interesting dynamic that uh, kids in Africa look at America for all of its glitz, glamour, pop culture, and whatnot. Meanwhile, our biggest stars, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Shakira, they're all going to Africa to film their music videos because they understand the richness of the culture. And so we need to be better stewards of the power we have in, in entertainment. And so what do we do? We need to make sure that artists are acting and behaving and frankly creating with more awareness. We need to make sure that we have better grips and control, frankly, ownership of media outlets. Um, we need to make sure that the information that we are able to disseminate through various channels is trusted information, accurate information, so that we're not contributing to the divisiveness uh, that we see so much in society. Education, we're not just talking about formal education in schools, although that's a huge point in the agenda. We're talking about more than that. We're talking about life. We're talking about cultural exchange. We're talking about what, how technology has impacted, frankly, every aspect of our life. Well, how do we, how do we um, utilize that in a positive and productive way? We talked about the idea of student exchanges. We talked about the idea of sister cities. We talked about the idea of, um, of being respectful, but, but not just being respectful, but like making a, a campaign of it, like making sure we're impressing that value upon our youngsters to make sure there's a mutual respect and frankly, not as much of a differentiation between African Americans and African immigrants. How do we, how do we change that mindset? Uh, we talked about social, uh, and frankly, you know, how, how do we, you know, on, on the social aspect, first of all, like the technology of today, how do we better utilize social media as a unifying tool instead of the mess that it so often is? Um, but again, we went back to the topic of owning our own information outlets and news stations and whatnot. So that's a rushed, that's a rushed summary of what we talked about. We did come to a bottom line, and that is that we need not just unity, but structural unity. Unity at the organizational level, at the community level, at the individual level. And unity is not the same thing as erasing anyone's identity. There are things that are deeply embedded in our identity that we are and should be very proud of as African immigrants, or more specific to your country, or more specific to your tribe, or more specific to your family. There are deeply embedded elements that we should be proud of, but that should not stop us from coming together in a unified way. And so Brother Omar, uh, head of the Aurora NAACP, was in our group, and unfortunately he had to leave. He made a powerful point, and I'll close with that. He said, unity, but with humility. He explained that when he comes to an, an African leadership group event, 
He has no desire to be a dominant voice. He is here to learn. He is here to absorb. And likewise, when Papa and, and the rest of us ALGers are, are at NAACP meetings, we're not there to be a dominant voice. We're there to learn, engage, and embrace uh, the good that is happening there. So I thought um, that was a good note that he left us on, and I'll leave you on that note. Unity with humility. I taught a class earlier this week, and one of the readings was by Margaret Wheatley and Kilner Rogers. And in the reading, and this happens a lot, they used an African proverb. Now, I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know if the source is real or what, or where it's from, but, I, but it did speak to me as I was hearing you and as I was watching this process. And the proverb goes, alone I have seen many things, none of which are real. And that speaks to me only because of this. We do see things, we have our perspective, we have our experiences, but when they become real is when they're community, when it's shared, when it's our reality and not just mine. And that's where we're getting to right here. Y'all wanna close this up? It's your thing. Thank you, folks. Thank you, thank you very much. And we will never have done this without you guys. And thank you for making an impact. So for the next step, action step, I'm gonna invite uh, um, the, our team member to have some closing remarks. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I think we have maybe five minutes or so. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you more than you know. Uh, I'd like for us to just take a second to take a collective breath together, if you don't mind. Can we all just inhale, take a breath together, inhale, fill in our bellies with air, and slowly release, bringing our navels back towards our spine. One more time, take an inhale through your nose, take it in. This collective group, slowly release, grounding ourselves in this knowledge and in this togetherness. We're looking at next steps. This was a wonderful event. Thank you for being here, but we're looking at next steps. We wanna be active. Love is a verb, it's something that you do. So we're gonna take this information and we're going to move forward. We're looking for leaders. There's a leader in each one of us. We're all leaders. So we're looking for leaders to come forth with their ideas, with the events that you'd like to have happen. And we will support you. So please keep an eye out for an email telling you about our next event. Please contact us if you have an idea in mind that we can bring communities together. If you're in the African-American community and you're having events, please invite Africans and African immigrants and vice versa. When Africans are having an event, please invite African-Americans. And as I said before, please do not forget, we are all leaders. We need you. We want to move forward with this. This is a movement. This is not a one-time event. So we need each leader in the room to come forth with their ideas, with your movements, and we can work together. We will support you. If you come up with an idea, we will be there to support you. We'll do the work to move it forward. And we need all of us in this room and more. So please invite friends, invite families, and do the work. Thank you. Oh, one, one other thing, I apologize. We have a QR code here. Please take a moment to scan this and get solutions. We need more solutions. We wanna to continue to move forward. Thank you, and we're gonna have a group family picture. This is a family reunion. If you don't have to leave immediately, please come forward so we can take a photo together. Thank you.